Hey guys, Steven here from Rattle Essence and welcome back to another video. Thank you so much for watching, it means a lot to me. Um, this is part three of my Q&A video, so a while ago I basically asked you guys to ask me as many questions as you want on whatever topics you want and I will do my absolute best to answer your questions. And I, had, I got a ton of questions being asked and I actually put them all in this list so I'm trying to answer every single question that you guys have asked me. Um, but it is taking a long time and I did have to make this in three parts so this is the third and final part of my video so thank you again for asking me all your questions um, I appreciate it very much it means a lot to me that you guys are so concerned and interested in my channel and what I do so thank you for taking uh, part in it and thank you for asking asking your questions so before I start off let me show you guys what my set of the day is if I can find it I know you guys probably can't see this but there's a lot off camera there it is just pardon me for one moment Here's my scent of the day for today. This is Nautica Voyage. I have fragrances all around me. You guys can't see this. This is just one puzzle of a bigger picture. But my scent today is Nautica Voyage. This is a great composition by Maurice Roussel. It has a very fresh aquatic uh, smell to it. A little floral at the same time, but it's my fiance's absolute favorite on me. So I love wearing this one. And uh, I just smell so amazing when I wear it because I know that other people uh, probably think that I smell great. So that's my scent of the day. Let me know what yours is. Leave a comment down below. Thank you so much. So let's go ahead and continue where I left off and at the end of my part two video. So we're on question uh, 79 right now. So thank you for all of your amazing questions. So this question is, what's your religion? Now this is a little bit of a personal question and I am one who avidly follows the quote, leave all religion and politics at the door. But since you asked and I want to deliver, um, I was raised Greek Orthodox um, and I still attend church quite regularly. I'm even getting married in a Greek Orthodox church. The only thing is I don't practice as much as I used to. I consider myself very spiritual, uh, but my formal religion, if you, if you were to ask me and you did, um, I would have to say Greek Orthodox. Have you always been a vegan? If not, what made you become vegan? That's a fantastic question. And I didn't even know that some of the people out there knew that I was vegan. I don't think I've ever mentioned it in a video, maybe on my Facebook and you know, you also follow me or you're friends with me on Facebook. But yes, I am vegan. I have been vegan since March of 2009. So I've been vegan for the past six years. And the question is, um, have you always been vegan? No, just for the past six years, but it has been a long time since. And what made you become vegan? Now, it's hard for me to say there's one thing in specific that made me become vegan. I think it was a combination of different things. You know, me, you know, seeing what happens in factory farms, me watching videos, me reading up on nutrition extensively, uh, me being sick and wanting to make a change in my own diet, energetic pursuit, health pursuit, uh, even fasting for my religion. So it was a combination of different elements caring about the environment that, you know, made me become vegan. And a lot of people actually don't know this about me, but at one point I was 83 pounds heavier, 83, 83. Um, I was, according to my body mass index, I was uh, severely overweight. And I had a lot of things that were going on with me that, you know, a lot of things that were wrong with me. I had a uh, gynecomastia, I had um, urticaria, which is a dermatological condition where your uh, skin is uh, sensitive to extreme weather conditions and weather temperatures. So for for me, in the cold, I used to break out in hives and my blood pressure would drop and my skin would turn purple. It was really, really bad. I was overweight. I had low self-confidence. And then I started reading up on nutrition. I started watching a bunch of highly informative YouTube videos. Thank you to this website. And since then, I, I made the change in my diet. I started supplementing with things like um, vitamin B12, not the chemical forms like cyanocobalamin and methylcobalamin, but Saccharomyces cerevisiae from you know freshwater algae. I started supplementing with blue-green algae hemp seed oil, flaxseed oil, and my health is the best it's ever been. I haven't gotten sick in the past seven years, and I think I average like one headache a year, and it's not even that bad. I go to sleep, I wake up, and it's totally gone. So I have to attribute uh, my diet to my health. I'm very, this is probably the best decision that I've ever made in my life. And, you know, disease runs in my family. You know, my grandfather has type 2 diabetes. He has bullous pemphigoid, which is an autoimmune disorder. My mother has lupus. My brother was recently diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. He has several lesions in his brain and on his spine. And my grandmother is confined to a wheelchair. So I don't want to be in that same condition. 
nutrients. So I'm doing everything possible, eating right, supplementing, exercising, and I have the mental clarity and acuity that I've never had before in my entire life. So I definitely do attribute that to my diet. Um, how do you feel about having similar fragrances in your collection? Do you see similarities between Blanche and Luministe, or is it just me? Uh, those two fragrances are certainly in the same family. It's the same genre, so of course you are going to see some similarities. But as far as having fragrances in your collection that are, are uh, similar like that, I don't think it's necessary. Of course, it's redundant. So if you're looking for an Aventus smelling fragrance, buy Aventus. If you've smelled Aventus and you know you love it, then just buy Aventus. Don't buy Lomani AB Spirit Silver and Glen Perry Unpredictable unless budget is a, a concern to you, unless being conservative with your money is a thing, then definitely go for those. But if you have the money and you could afford it, instead of looking for the next best thing, just buy the best thing, right? Uh, I love the Dior Online, especially the Lipsticky Iris Snow. Could you recommend some designer or niche fragrances that have an iris that smells similar to that of the Dior Om series? That's an excellent question. And I think a lot of people are totally with you on that. A lot of people really love that uh, lipsticky note in Dior Om. I would recommend in the designer realm, Paul Smith Mann. That's a pretty affordable scent that you could probably find online. If you're looking for a really augmented version of that lipstick note, I would recommend checking Histoire de Parfums Tuberose One Capricious. That one is like Dior Om on crack. It's, if you can imagine a more floral version of Dior Homme with that lipstick note amplified tenfold, that's what you're going to get. But any fragrance typically or generally containing the note of iris is going to have that effect. D600 by Carmen Barcelona is another great one. What does your wife think about your fragrance hobby? You know, my fiance, she, she has her ups and downs, you know, there are times when she's extremely supportive of it, and for the most part, she is very supportive. Uh, like I mentioned in my previous Q&A answer videos, she has been, you know, kind of confrontational about it at times, but now for the past few months, being that we have been saving up for our wedding and we're both carrying our own weight, and she sees that I can abstain from this for a prolonged period of time, she knows that I'm not entirely consumed by it. So lately, she's been very supportive, even attended Min New York with me the other day when I met up with a couple of uh, YouTube fragrance reviewers to do a video, so she's incredibly supportive, and I love her dearly for that. Uh, what houses would you recommend for someone looking to get their feet wet in niche perfumes? Fantastic question. Um, you know, these fragrances are kind of pricey, the ones that I'm going to recommend, um, but you can always get in on a split, or if you must have the bottle, you can always buy the small size bottle. I would recommend going with something like Creed. Uh, the biggest mistake that I made when I first started getting my feet wet in the niche uh, market is I ordered a sample of Comme des Garçons Eau de Parfum. And anyone who knows that scent knows that it contains notes of industrial glue, packing tape, aldehydes, and it really smells like packing tape. And when I smelled that, it set the calibration in such a weird way for me that it was, it was hard to rank or judge other scents. So don't start off with something so artisanal and avant-garde and obscure and niche as that. Rather, start off with something very appealing and wearable and friendly and universally appealing to the masses, something preferably from the House of Creed. So Green Irish Tweed, Aventus, Millicent Imperial, Original Vetiver, even Royal Oud, one of the more wearable Ouds in the market. Definitely check out the House of Creed. If you can't afford it, you know, jump in on a split. Uh, when did you start this hobby? Fantastic question. Um, I probably started, I, I would say when I was 10 years old, that's when I bought my, w w when my mother bought me my very first bottle of cologne, which was uh, CKB by Calvin Klein, and I would consider myself a collector since that age, because I could never bring myself, even when I was 10 years old, I could never bring myself to throw away a bottle of cologne or perfume, because I was always entranced, not just by how it smelled, but by the presentation and the bottle and the whole package. So, so when I was in high school, I had like 30 bottles in my collection. I was wearing Paco Rabanne Pour Homme, Realities by Liz Claiborne, Pie by Givenchy, and all of my friends were wearing Axe and Tag and Bod and those kinds of sprays. So I was, you know, seriously, when did I seriously get into this hobby, like collecting niche and designer and, you know, reviewing? Late 2011, early 2012, but I really started my passion, my love for fragrances when I was 10 years old. 
Do you have any musical interests such as playing an instrument? Yes, I actually, I don't think I've mentioned that on my YouTube channel, but I do play guitar. I have been receiving instruction in guitar for 10 years. I stopped recently because there were conflicts with my schedule. Sorry if you hear my dogs barking in the background. Um, but I play the guitar. I also play the bass guitar. It's the same last four strings tuned down an octave, so I've, I'm pretty good at playing guitar, uh, bass guitar as well. Um, and, and when I was in high school, I played tenor sax for a while. But my instrument of choice is the uh, acoustic guitar. I love playing guitar. I can do a uh, lead rhythm. I've been in several bands before as well. Question 87, got one page of questions left. Thank you again. Uh, excellent question, by the way. Hello, Stephen. I wanted to know what, in your opinion, are the best five fragrances for a third year high school student. If you could base your recommendations on designer fragrances, I would be very thankful. Of course, for a high school student, I would totally uh, recommend designer fragrances. My top five though, I actually recently made a video in which I talk about 10 fragrances. So I'm gonna leave a link to that in the description section below. I had to help my friend Michelle, who actually gave me her opinion on 10 designer fragrances that I would recommend for a high school student. But I would go for something that's a compliment getter, something that's a little bit more affordable, uh, maybe fragrances like Aqua Digio by Armani, Lo de Se Por Homme by Isimiyaki, Spice Bomb by Victor and Rolf, Lom by Yves Saint Laurent, One Million by Paco Rabanne. These are fragrances that are very easy to get. You can probably find them online at a severely discounted price. Just be careful. Uh, you don't want to buy a counterfeit. You don't want to buy a dupe, right? So make sure you're buying it from a reputable source, uh, a seller that has a lot of positive feedback, right? So um, what do you think is the best oud fragrance? It's that's, that's a really good question, but it's a tough question at the same time. It really all depends on what kind of oud you're going for. If you're looking for a very wearable oud, I would recommend something like Creed's Royal Oud. If you're looking for something a little bit more daring, maybe Oud 27 by Le Labo or Leather Oud by Christian Dior, part of the La Collection Privé line. But as far as the best oud, for me, Dan is the person you have to ask this question to. So my makers, he's he's the oud king, the oud and vetiver king, or the god. But um, for me, from what I've heard, oud oil from the Middle East that has been aged for many, many years, those are like the best ouds. I haven't smelled any of those though, so unfortunately, uh, those are the recommendations that I would make, totally. What do you think is the best leather fragrance? You know what? I actually thought about this one. I'm gonna have to say Bulgari Black. I know it kind of has that leathery, rubbery kind of a smell, but I wore that so much in the winter when I first bought it, like 2011, 2012, and I think that with a leather jacket in the winter and that vanilla base is just so amazing. So for me, it would be Bulgari Black. I know there are a lot of people probably beg to differ, but I just, it's a very personal scent for me. What are your four favorite Tom Ford fragrances? Um, they would probably all have to be from the private blend, and I'm gonna go with the very first four that I purchased, which were Tobacco Vanille, Tuscan Leather, Noir de Noir, and Oud Wood. If you had the chance to have a famous perfumer make you your own personal fragrance, who would it be and why? And would your fragrance be Oriental, Gourmand, Fougere, or Woody? Well, I'm very fortunate to say that I have had a pretty successful perfumer make me my own fragrance, and that perfumer is John Pegg of the Kerosene brand. He made me a fragrance that I allowed him, or I gave him permission to call Four Dark Corners, and it's my very own personal scent. It has benzoin and sweet resins and caramel and oud, and it's one of the longest lasting and best performing fragrances in my entire collection. So thank you, John, for making that fragrance for me. But if I had like a, a famous perfumer, somebody who's been doing this for many, many years, has made fragrances for really large companies, even though I love Olivier Polge and Olivier Cresp and Anique Minardo, Maurice Roussel, I would probably have to go with someone, uh, definitely would have to go with Bertrand du Chafour. I just think that this guy can make anything. You know, he's made Penhaligon's uh, Sartorial. He has made Enchanted Force by the Vagabond Prince. He has made so many L'Artisan fragrances. Like some of the most, you know, obscure fragrances. You're like, how can he possibly make like all of these, um, Fragrances here, Jardin du Poète, Bois d'Ombrie, uh, Bombe du Doge. He's just such an incredible uh, perfumer, and I know that whatever I end up giving him, he's going to do a fantastic job with it. 
If you had your own perfume line, would it be designer-like or niche? What would be the notes? What name would you give it? Uh, excellent question, and I'm going to answer part of that question. I wanted to have the accessibility, not necessarily the versatility or wearability, but I wanted to have the accessibility of a designer fragrance, and I wanted to have the quality and the, the composition and the uniqueness of a niche scent. I already know what I would want it to be called. I actually have an idea for two fragrances. Um, I have been thinking about this for a very long time. I don't want to say it on camera just because you never know, right? But um, I do have a couple ideas in the back of my mind. One of them would feature the note of African orange flower. I'm not going to get too much in more detail about that, but uh, who knows? Maybe, you know, hopefully, God willing, in the future, something does end up uh, coming into fruition. How often do you buy your fragrances? And also, what was the longest time you spent without buying a single fragrance? Uh, the longest time I've ever went without buying a fragrance were my first 10 years of existence. <laughs> No, but seriously, um, since I really started getting into this hobby, the longest that I probably went, I want to say, is like two months, two to two and a half months. Um, you know, in between, if I just want to go on like a cheapy binge, I might go to TJ Maxx and buy like a 10 to $15 cheapy or something like that. Nothing that's going to break the bank, you know. Lately, I've been saving up for my wedding, so I've been very conservative with my, with my funds, very frugal. Um, so yeah, that was probably the longest that I've been. Um, I know a recent acquisition of mine was Criminal of Love by, by Killian, uh, but that was a fragrance that was sent to me by my good friend Anita. So Anita, thank you so much if you're watching this. But since then, yeah, it's been a very long time, you know, so it's been about two, two to two and a half months. How often do you buy your fragrances? And also, what was the longest time you spent without buying a single fragrances? Um, oh, that's the one that I just answered. I'm sorry, but I didn't answer. Uh, that first question, how often do you buy your fragrance? That's why I still had my finger on it. The, um, it's very scattered and varied. You know, there was one time when I wanted to buy all of Anique Minardo's fragrances. So I went on fragrance in it and I bought like 10 to 12 fragrances at once. Um, but then there are times when I, I'll go like two months and I'll buy one fragrance. You know, so it, it really depends. It's scattered. Good question, by the way. Thank you. Would you have any unisex or women's fragrances that you would recommend for a female teacher at work? Yeah, that's actually a very good question. I have recommended, uh, quite recently as a matter of fact, a fragrance for a colleague of mine uh, with whom I actually work in the same department. Um, the recommendation that I made, and you know I love many, many women's fragrances. We're talking designers now, Flower Bomb by Victor and Rolf for the colder months, Light Blue by Dolce & Gabbana for the warmer months. Um, but the one that I just recommended to my co-worker is a fragrance, it's actually More Than Words by Zerzhov, part of the Join the Club line. And that's because she expressed interest in a patchouli-based scent that has spices and vanilla. So for me, the first one that came to mind was More Than Words by Zerzhov. So I just recently recommended that one. She also expressed interest in the note of cinnamon. So I recommended Untitled Number no. 2 by Magnetic Scent and T for 2 by L'Artisan Parfumeur. If you thought there would be a ban in the future on the import of fragrances containing an ingredient such as ambergris, what fragrance would you stock up on? That's a fantastic and a very scary question at the same time. I would probably stock up on Millicent Imperial by Creed. If that fragrance does indeed utilize real ambergris, which sells for $1,000 for a single gram, uh, and that's something that Creed purports to do, to use real ambergris in their perfumes, I would probably stock up on Millicent Imperial because the dry down and even the opening is, in my opinion, one of the most regal and if I may even use the adjective majestic smells that I've ever smelled. So I love that scent. I would probably buy several bottles of it at retail. I don't want the lighter notes like the, the citrus to be compromised, you know, and buying it uh, off a secondhand retailer. So Millicent Imperial by Creed. Will you be making a top fragrances for college kids video? Yes, I do want to make my own personal top 10 for high school kids. And then subsequently, I want to make one for college kids. So thank you for expressing interest. And thank you for asking that question. Uh, there is going to be a video coming out on that soon. So thanks. In your opinion, what is the most overrated fragrance? Hmm, wow, overrated. 
When I think of that hyphenated adjective, overrated, I think of a fragrance that's not as good as people make it out to be. And I can't really say that I've gotten my nose around to such fragrance because think about the ones that have been hyped. Aventus by Creed, Dior Homme Intense by Christian Dior, L'Instant de Guerlain, Pour Homme Eau Extreme. All of those fragrances are actually worth the hype. They're all fantastic. They're amazing. I would probably pick Pure Malt by Terry Mugler. I feel like there's so much talk about it in the community and it's not that it's not worth that talk. It is worth the talk. It's worth the hype for sure. Um, but I think there are so many other fragrances from the Pure line that are also worthy of a mention. Pure Wood, Pure Havan, even Pure Coffee, Ultra Zest. So there are a lot of really solid fragrances that deserve an equal amount of praise. When, question 97. When will you do a review on Hommage à l'homme, Voyageur Lalique? Really good question. Um, I get requests for fragrances all the time and I feel really bad because um, I don't, unfortunately, I don't own every fragrance. So there are a lot of fragrances that, believe it or not, you know, people would say, oh my god, you don't have a bottle of that? I would have, I would have thought you would have been one of the first, but no, I, you know, I, I don't own this scent. Um, I've heard of it. I've never smelled it, but I will put it on my to sniff list. And if I do like it, when I smell it, I will commit to buying a bottle. And if I do buy a bottle, I can guarantee you that in due time, it will get reviewed. So thank you for your interest and thank you for asking that question. Second to last question is, do you have a dog? Yes, I actually have four dogs, two at my mother's house and two at the house at which I live with my fiance. So the two at my mother's, which I consider mine too, one of them is Sandy. She is uh, an Irish terrier. The other one is Hermione, and she is a Yorkie Shih Tzu mix. And then at my house with Jen, uh, we have two dogs. One of them, his name is Duke, and he is a Shih Tzu Poodle mix. And I know it's kind of messed up for me to say this, and we shouldn't have favorites with pets or with kids, but Duke is my favorite dog. He's, he's the best dog that I've ever had, and I love him to death. And the other one is a Shih Tzu... Uh, no, not Shih Tzu, I'm sorry. Chihuahua Rat Terrier mix. So I have a all four different kinds of dogs. And the very last question, and I, I saved this for last purposely, number 99. Uh, this question is, why did you start YouTube? A lot of people don't know this about me, but before I started making fragrance videos on YouTube, I had very, I had many unsuccessful attempts at maintaining a YouTube channel. I had a, a channel where I did uh, guitar covers, acoustic guitar covers. I had another channel where I did comedy sketches and none of those were ever successful. And the reason for that is because when I made those channels, I made it with the intention of becoming popular one day. And I think that's what a lot of us do, you know, whether we get into recording ourselves playing video games, let's play videos, fragrance reviews, sneaker reviews. We usually want to get popular. But for me, I didn't make this channel to become popular, and I don't think I'll ever become popular reviewing colognes, but I made this video because I discovered that there were other guys out there who were as passionate about this as I am, and I never in a million years would have believed that there would be guys who collect bottles of perfume. And I thought I was a loner when I was in high school. I thought I was one of a kind, pardon the expression. And then when I discovered that there were gentlemen like Mark and Al and Miguel and, and Cubby and Cody doing this very same thing that I aspired to do, I said, you know what? I just want people to know that I'm out there. And that's when I made my very first review of Infusion Dome by Prada. And I got such an overwhelming positive amount of compliments and comments and likes and subscriptions. And I said, oh my God. This is so different from the amount of feedback that I received on my previous YouTube channels. And that encouraged me to make more videos. And the more and more that I made videos, the more and more attention and likes and subscriptions and comments that I was receiving. So I knew this is something that I wanted to do long term. And ever since then, I've just grown so much more passionate about this hobby and the collection and, and everything as a whole that I cannot picture a life where I don't review fragrances or I don't wear fragrances or I don't collect fragrances. This is who I am. 
and uh, when I get in front of this camera every day not every day but whenever I get in front of this camera for you guys you know I speak the truth and I tell you exactly what I feel about these fragrances and I try to deliver my passion to you in the most authentic yet natural way I don't you know hyperbolize anything I don't overreact I don't exaggerate I tell you exactly how I feel and sometimes I might get in front of this camera and I might speak positively about 10 fragrances in a row and you'll see all these positive and glaring reviews from me well that's because I really love fragrances and it's hard for me to pick up a bottle and smell and say, oh my god this is disgusting because I just have such a such reverence for fragrances and um, I want to thank you guys because if it weren't for you I wouldn't be making this video right now I hit a million views on YouTube not too long ago that wouldn't have happened without you guys. I'm close to getting 10,000 subscribers. I was shocked when I hit 100 subscribers. Now I'm, I'm in awe. I'm at a loss for words. So guys, thank you. Thank you for being subscribed to my channel. Thank you for tuning into the videos that I make video after video after video. It means so much for me. It's so humbling. You know, I never would have imagined that this would be going on. And I owe it all to you guys. So thank you. Thank you for being the best subscribers that a YouTuber can ever have. Thank you for giving me your love and support and affection and dedication to my channel. It means more to me than I am able to put into words. So thank you for that. And guys, thank you for watching this video. So if you know if you want me to do another one of these in the future maybe a year from now let me know leave a comment down below don't forget to tell me what is your scent of the day my scent of the day today was nautica voyage and again guys thank you so much for watching please don't forget to comment rate and subscribe for future videos so again everyone thank you very much for watching this has been steven with another video from red essence we'll see you soon